Hi, my name is Hossein Youssefi, and I'm a software engineer on the Dart native Interop team. Hi, my name is Mariam Hasnani, and I'm a product manager on the Flutter team. Today, we're going to share a new approach for system interoperability that allows Flutter app or plugin developers to call Android libraries directly from Dart. Let's imagine you want your Flutter mobile app to access the device hardware for things like user's location, camera, notifications, and more. Traditionally, you would use a plugin with a method channel, which allows you to interact with platform APIs by sending and receiving messages between Dart and native code. There are over 20,000 plugins that exist for the Android platform in the Flutter ecosystem on pub.dev today. While plugins are great for building a reusable way for Flutter apps to access platform APIs, developing them with method channels can be time consuming and require a lot of code. For example, to implement the Flutter camera plugin that calls Android's Camera 2 API, we used method channels to write handlers to call and return responses between the Flutter plugin and the native code located in camera.java. We also had to ensure that types and parameters being sent and received matched. To make it easier and faster for developers who want to access the underlying native platform when developing Flutter plugins or apps, we have a suite of tools for Dart interoperability with platform APIs. Pigeon is a code gen tool for generating type-safe interop code to communicate between Flutter and its host platform. It allows you to define a description of your plugin's API in a Dart file, and then generate skeleton code for Dart, Java, and Objective-C for handling messages that you would usually write manually with method channels. Pigeon is great for developing Flutter plugins that are used across multiple platforms because of its unified interface, and is easier to use than method channels for adding Flutter code to a native app. We just used Pigeon ourselves to rewrite the Flutter camera plugin to support Android's latest Camera X library, which is now available for you to try on pub.dev. But some of you may wish there was a way you could use Dart directly to call platform APIs, so you didn't have to touch the native side of the code. For this scenario, we created a tool called FFIGen that generates Dart bindings for C, Objective-C, or Swift UI code, and can be used to implicitly call iOS APIs without needing to add handlers to the native code. JNI Gen is the newest tool we are actively developing and the focus of this session. Similar to FFI Gen, JNI Gen generates Dart bindings so that you can instantiate Java objects, call Kotlin methods, and more without leaving Dart. Unlike Pigeon, FFIGen and JNIGen can be used when developing purely Dart apps, in addition to Flutter apps or Flutter plugins. All right, Hussein, let's go through a concrete example to get a better understanding of how JNIGen works. Here's a very simple Java class called example that has a static method called sum for adding two integers. What do we need to do to generate Dart bindings so that we can use this Java method in a Flutter app? To generate Dart bindings for a given Java class, we need to take four steps. One, add JNI and JNIGen dependencies. Two, create a top-level JNIGen.yaml config file. Three, run JNIGen to generate the bindings. And four, add external native builds to app slash build.gradle. So let me show you how that's done in code. First, run Flutter pub add JNI dev colon JNIGen. This adds packet JNI to dependencies and packet JNIGen to dev dependencies. Then let's create a file called JNIGen.yaml. This file has options for specifying where to store the generated bindings, where the Java source is located, and which classes to generate from. Now we can run JNIGen to generate the bindings. Lastly, let's add the path to cmakeless.txt, generated by JNIGen, to app slash build.gradle. Great. Now that the bindings are generated, I will import the generated bindings in the main file where my Flutter UI code is located. The UI is basically two text fields that take in the numbers I want to add. Now, I can use the example.sum method 
to calculate their sum and show it in a text widget. Using the example that sum method in Dart is identical to how you would use it in Java. Now I can run the example app with inputs 15 and 23 to get the output 38. Thanks, Hussein. Now that we've learned how to use JNIGen, I'd like to go a little bit deeper to explain exactly how it works. First, what is JNI? JNI stands for Java Native Interface, which allows Java code that runs inside a Java virtual machine to interoperate with applications written in other native programming languages, like C and C++. We've created package JNI in Dart as a support library that enables us to use JNI to interrupt with Java code. We have a similar mechanism called Dart FFI, which stands for Foreign Function Interface, to interrupt with C code. In fact, package JNI leverages Dart FFI under the hood so that Dart code can interrupt with C code, and then we use JNI to interrupt C code with Java code. We call this interop code that glues the languages together bindings. We could just use package JNI and write the Dart bindings ourselves, but instead, it's easier to let package JNI gen generate them for us. Now that we've covered the basics, I believe since you can compile Kotlin to Java bytecode, you can also generate Dart bindings for Kotlin as well. Android has a fairly new Jetpack library called HealthConnect that enables Android developers to access the health and fitness data on a user's device. Let's use JNI Gen to leverage this Kotlin-based API to build a pedometer app. For this app, I am thinking we show the total number of steps I've taken for a specific day. It seems like HealthConnect can read aggregated data such as the total number of steps in a given period. Since this is more complex than adding a Java class file from the previous example, Hussein, how do we start? Let's take this simple Flutter application called Step Counter. When pressing the refresh button, we want the step count to be updated with the number of steps we've taken in the last 24 hours. I've already added JNI and JNI gen dependencies. To incorporate Health Connect into this, let's check out its online documentation and follow the steps there. I already installed Health Connect on my phone. I also have Google Fit, which tracks the number of steps I'm taking and store it in Health Connect. I also added the necessary dependency in app slash build.gradle. The note here specifies that Health Connect SDK is compatible with API level 26. So I made sure the min SDK version and target SDK version are at least 26. Also, since we are using the latest version of Health Connect, I updated the Kotlin version of our application. Following the guide, I added all necessary pieces like permissions to androidmanifest.xml. With all the setup done, we need to see if Health Connect is available on device, instantiate it, and retrieve the aggregate data we want. We can generate the Dart bindings for Kotlin classes as we encounter them in the documentation, incrementally using JNIGen. First, let's see if Health Connect is available on device or not. For this, we'll need to generate bindings for Health Connect client and context. To do this, we first create a JNIGen.yaml file, just like before. Here, I set add Gradle depths to true. This way, JNIGen can also generate bindings from our Gradle dependencies. I choose the ASM backend, which generates bindings from Java bytecode instead of Java source code. By setting suspend fun to async to true, JNIGen converts Kotlin's suspendable functions to Dart asynchronous methods. I specify the path to the output files here. And finally, I specify the classes that I want to generate bindings from. For now, let's add Health Connect client and context. We must run Flutter build APK once before generating the code so Gradle can actually resolve the dependencies. Now, let's run JNIGen like before 
and voila, we successfully generated the bindings. Again, let's not forget to add external native builds to app slash build.gradle. Back to the documentation. Now that we have generated the bindings, we can replicate the Health Connect availability check in Dart. First, to get the context we can use, jni.getCachedApplicationContext from package jni. This returns a pointer to the application context. Then, we can wrap this pointer in a generated context object using context.fromref. Now, let's check the status of Health Connect by calling the SDK status method. The second parameter is optional, so we can use the generated method that only gets a context argument. But why is the method's name SDK status one? Because in Java, we can have multiple methods with the same name that take different types and number of arguments. To differentiate them in the generated Dart code, JNIGen adds a number to the end of their names. All right, back to the code. If Health Connect is not available, we can show some message prompting our users to install it. Otherwise, let's create a client and pass it to our main widget. Here's the Kotlin code from the documentation that shows us how to read aggregated data from Health Connect. As I mentioned before, to be able to write this code in Dart, we have to generate the classes used like aggregate request and time range filter. In this specific example, distance record is used, but we want to know the total number of steps. So we should use steps record instead. So let's go back to jnigen.yaml, add the other classes we need and regenerate the bindings. Now we can create an aggregate request for the total count of steps after yesterday. You can see how I used the generated classes like aggregate request and time range filter in my code here. Now that we have the aggregate request, let's call client at aggregate and await the response. We want to make sure the returned response is not null. If so, let's take the number of steps and update the counter. One last step before running the app, we must call jni.initdlapi. This initializes the communication channels between Dart and native platform, which is necessary for asynchronous communication and callbacks. We are done. Now let's run the app. When we press the refresh button, the text gets updated with the number of steps we've taken in the last day. You can find the full code here. And there is also a more complete example in this link, which shows the chart of the steps you've taken in the last day. The example has support for Android using JNIGen and iOS using FFIGen. We've now demoed two examples using the JNIGen package. First, we built a simple Flutter app that uses Dart to call the sum Java method. Next, we wrapped Health Connect Jetpack library with JNIGen and created a nice Dart API, exposing the classes we needed. We then used Dart bindings to call the steps record class to build a pedometer app. Flutter has thousands of plugins that let you access Android APIs like the Health Connect client. While developing plugins with method channels is still a viable approach for communicating with platform APIs, it can be cumbersome and require a lot of manual code. That's why we created CodeGen solutions for Dart interoperability with platform APIs that address the same problem, but with different approaches. Let's recap what they are. Pigeon is a faster type safe way of developing Flutter plugins across multiple platforms because it creates a unified interface that can be used to communicate between Flutter and native Android, iOS, and desktop platforms. On the other hand, FFIGen automatically generates Dart bindings to access C, Objective-C, or Swift libraries directly with Dart, so you don't have to touch the native side of the code. We now have a similar tool for Android development called JNIGen that also generates Dart bindings to call methods and instantiate objects that are written in Java or Kotlin. 
JNIGen and FFIGen can be used together to develop a cross-platform Flutter app that calls iOS and Android APIs directly with Dart. When using JNIGen, there are four steps. First, add JNI and JNIGen dependencies. Second, create a top-level JNIGen.yaml config file. Then, run JNIGen to generate the bindings. And finally, add external native builds to app slash build.gradle. For more details, check out our online documentation linked in the description below. Currently, JNIGen is still considered experimental, but it is ready for you to try. We'd love your feedback on how to make this work better for your scenarios as we get it to stable. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.